Hi, I'm Shifa Brannigan, and this is Shifa's Magic Alcove. So I would like to talk about the concept of good and evil and black and white magic um, and sort of break it down a little bit because it came up in our last live show and it seems to me an important topic that should be addressed. Um, we covered it a little bit on the live show, but for those of you who didn't see it, we're just going to start from scratch and pretend we never covered the subject at all. So the terms black and white um, are really charged words because culturally speaking, uh, especially Western culture, I should say, the idea of black being bad and white being good has sort of been ingrained in our language and, and everything else. And historically speaking, there's reasons for that. And uh, I don't know exactly when it started, but certainly the idea of the night, the dark, when we can't see things is scary and it became associated with evil. The color black became associated with evil because of that. And then the white associated with the day and the light and so forth and purity was then associated with good and God and, and that kind of thing. And, and as humans, we took it to some extreme lengths to the point where people who weren't born um, to the right strata, social strata, or some other thing that was wrong in their in the eyes of society at the time, uh, like were different from other people, had blemishes, physical, uh, acted oddly, um, were considered like, you know, of the devil and working with the devil and all that kind of stuff. It's just like when the burning times and the Inquisition and so forth got rolling. It was like society was looking for an outlet, a, a group of people to blame, and that's never stopped. We still do that kind of thing. It's like no matter what the situation is, you don't have a job, someone else must have taken it. Um, we need to fight other countries because they're they're doing things different from us and we don't like that. Um, you know, the idea of we're better than an other, whoever the other might be, it, it, it's kind of real, um, it sort of insinuates itself in our language, our way of looking at things, the way we talk about people and think about people. Prejudice, racism, homophobia, misogyny, um, I think that all of those things, the foundation of them has to do with this idea of black and white, good and bad, um, evil and pure or what have you. And, and there are sort of artificial constructs that we've come up with. And that's the thing. It's like, however it happened, we're in, we're in the middle of it now. And we have to figure out where to go from here and how to how to deal with the prejudices that are there. So if we are a member of the magical community, shadow work is one of the reasons for doing the shadow work has to do with the idea that you are going to be um, evaluating these kinds of uh, prejudices and things in your own mind and, and your assumptions about the world and how it works and what it means. Uh, we talked about the fact that the ceremonial magicians where the, the Gnostic magic and stuff like that arrives from uh, during the Middle Ages and so forth. That was really, uh, Christianity was in control. Catholicism was at its height at the beginning of the Inquisition. And um, the idea that if you weren't with them, you were against them, uh, seems to have been fairly prevalent. 
So anyone who isn't you is against you, isn't, doesn't believe what you believe is by definition evil and bad. And, and that separation was uh, pretty strong. And it fed into the idea of people needing to look for the scapegoat for some, something to blame for what they were going through since we had no understanding of germs, um, plague, when the plague came by. That was very confusing for people and very scary. They didn't like it. And they were trying to find some kind of like reason why this is happening to them. And, um, you know, Satan trying to take over the world seemed to be a pretty reasonable assumption to make under the circumstances. And that the Jews were the ones who were responsible for it was an easy jump for them to make, even to the point where they tortured some Jews until they confessed to the fact that indeed they were spreading the plague. Because, you know, you get such reliable information under under torture and uh, and have all of their assumptions about what's going on verified, I guess. Uh, and so once they decided that, then it was everybody's job to weed them out. And I have to say that the QAnon thing that's going on right now reminds me of the witch hunts because what they've done is vilified a group of people, in this case, Democrats or anybody who wants someone to actually have a good living and have a decent life and have a house to live in, in my opinion, uh, that they're consorting with Satan and they're violating children and bathing in their blood to stay young and working strictly with the devil and know it and they're okay with it and that's what's going on. So it has become, in my country anyway, a religious war uh, where the people who have decided that this is reality, who already were inclined to think in terms of black and white, good and evil, um, and have fixated on this as the root of all the problems, are being led by whatever it is that's behind this. I don't know for sure who or what is behind it. I have some of my suspicions, but... The fact is, is that people who aren't thinking and are just reacting are and are already believers in uh, this scenario are definitely more likely to fall for the package. And the idea of being special and better um, validates their needs to... I don't know if it's it's just an ego gratification kind of a thing and the desire for everyone else that they know who they think is behind this to be punished and them proven right in the process it, it's sort of an interesting social push uh, that looks like a lot of others that have happened in the past like I said like the burning times and the inquisition and so forth where they blame different groups of people and I think that all of the conspiracy theories that feed into that are similar. So like the Illuminati are behind it or the Masons are behind it or, you know, some other group I haven't heard of are behind it. So it becomes some group out there that's responsible, which changes our focus and what we're looking at. We're looking at things outside of us instead of looking at ourselves. We're looking at things that are so huge and forces that are so incomprehensible that we can't do anything about them and then we become powerless to do anything and then you know we get angry and then we want to make somebody pay for what they've done to us and all this other stuff it's just like okay so the idea of good and evil is the root cause of most of these issues it's like it's sort of like the bottom rung of this ladder that we as a society in other parts not just in the United States but in other parts of the world have climbed and uh, jumped on as uh, as an explanation for something we don't understand the fact is not a single one of us is going to understand everything and that's okay we don't have to be the all-knowing being that knows absolutely everything about what's going on we have to remember that just because we don't know 
what's going on. It doesn't mean it's nefarious necessarily. It doesn't mean there aren't things that happen that need to be looked at. But the conspiracies that are real are not the ones that we're looking at now. I mean, I thought it was interesting. I was watching the news the other day about the group in uh, Texas that was waiting for uh, Kennedy Jr. to come and reinstate Trump into office. Um, and they were chanting, and what they were chanting was, have we gone to the moon? No. Have we gone to the moon? No. And I'm like, ironic, because it was Kennedy, the first one, who got us to the moon. And why they picked the Kennedys for this fantastical reappearing of someone from the dead is baffling to me, because... Of any person that might be dead, the Kennedys would be least likely to support anything that Trump represents and is doing, uh, considering they were Democrats and he's a Republican. So I'm not sure what they were hoping for there. I don't understand why anybody believed it, that that could happen, and that that was something reasonable, and they still believe it. So it's very confusing to me as a person. Um, like, what the heck is wrong with you people? I don't get it. And if that upsets somebody, well, it's time to look at yourself and figure out why. And what is it? Because my opinion shouldn't matter. <laughs> so there. But, um, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a strange thing that's going on. And I, how much more can they believe than they already have? So... I guess only time will tell. I wonder if there's somebody who just thinks this is really funny and just keeps throwing out more and more outrageous ideas and is quite surprised when they latch onto them and go like, yeah, that's it. And apparently they genuinely believe that they are woke, as they put it. Um, they're the only ones who know what's really going on and the rest of us are a bunch of dupes and are sitting around in the dungeons of our mind and don't understand reality and what's happening. And, of course, we will pay the ultimate price because that's sort of what happened or was supposed to happen, you know, during the Inquisition and so forth. It's like, or the ideas of the end of the world and wherever they come from. And there's pagans who have the same kind of ideology where they believe the world is coming to an end and in their version of it, um, it's all the normal people out there who are going to die and they're the ones who are going to have the knowledge and understanding of nature and magic and so forth and help reform and reshape the world after the world ends. So the scenario is basically the same, just a different storyline, but the underpinning of it is identical. And so I consider all of them bad because really, even if it were true, what would be the point? Um, I don't see the point. But I'm pretty confident it's not true. So, it sort of seems like mass insanity. And science is something that I am in favor of, and science has helped us evolve, in parts at least, um, aside, you know, beyond the idea that a germ. And a disease that you get is some kind of punishment from a deity or the deity or whoever uh, because you've been bad. And we still have that thing flying around in the ether in, you know, public stuff where, you know, there's a hurricane somewhere and somebody gets on their pulpit and says it's the reason is because there's gays that live there and God is punishing them because they've allowed them to exist, which makes no sense. You know, none of this stuff actually makes sense except in the strange mind fever um, that seems to exist when people get completely sucked into this kind of a scenario. So when it comes to magic, uh, what they've done in the magical community is that if you do anything to help yourself or manifest health or... Um, wealth or getting a job or anything like that, then that's black magic, which we all associate with negative bad. 
and the stuff that you do to improve yourself and to become a better person is the white magic which we equate with good and the fact is is they're just different forms of magic and different states that we can be in and they are not contrary or or opposites we see black and white as opposites and it's not an opposite thing it's just all part of the cycle part of everything that exists so the um so to fight that <laughs> people have come up with all sorts of different colors for magic green magic and gray magic you know green witches gray witches and who knows whatever else kind of colors that there are again that's an attempt to fracture and then define things according to the most recent definition of a gray witch that i looked up someone told me i wasn't a very powerful witch because i didn't understand the dark side and would never use it and then i started looking up the definition because they said they were a gray witch and i looked up the definition of a gray witch and i'm like this particular definition fits me to a t <laughs> so according to that definition i'm a gray witch because i'm willing to defend myself magically if i need to not that I'm looking for a fight or I'm out there trying to do anything to anybody because it's against my, per, you know, it's like I don't have time to waste on this kind of stuff. And most of my defenses are automatic enough. I don't need to actually pay any attention to that. But um, if needed be, and, you know, if I thought I needed to, I would and I have. And, but again, this is like trying to break things down into categories and they're not necessarily useful categories. There are even groups of witches that spend their time trying to decide if other witches are being good or bad and then trying to stop them from doing what they're doing if they think that they've determined that they're not good. Which I have, you know, questions about myself because how do we know they know that? What's good, what's bad, what's their theory, what are they working from? After having been a person in a group that was accused of doing black magic and being bad, and needing to be punished and stopped and I know I wasn't you know it's like judge jury executioner kind of thing of all things magical doesn't necessarily seem like a great fit I was invited to join one of those groups and I declined because I don't feel like it's my job or my duty or my place um, to decide for others what is good and what is bad I figure we learn probably more from our bad choices than we do from our good ones and if you can't make a mistake and learn from it then you're not doing it right anyway making mistakes is natural that's the way the world works so um so the reason why we've we've tried to stop using black and white to describe magic has to do with that inequity of power and uh other people deciding what's good and bad and mostly it was witches who were considered black magic and magicians who were considered white magicians they were doing the white magic although i have to say considering some of the old grimoires that are out there when they uh, evoke a demon into a triangle and try to bind them to their will and tell them that they're going to go to the ninth level of hell and be destroyed and utterly taken apart and tortured for all eternity if they don't do what they say sounds like black magic to me yeah <laughs> Although these were the people that got away with doing magic during the Inquisition. So, you know, eh, yeah, I think it's some questionable thing out there. I think it was more women. They were worried about women and, uh, and then anyone else who happened to be different and focused on them. So I don't know. But still, it's a good subject for discussion and it's an important one to think about because when we're doing our personal work and so forth, you know, I, I've told you guys before that I made a commitment to try and face the world and be with the world of in all its ups and downs and spirits and so forth without using and falling back on the human definitions of what it meant uh, because humans are not a very good arbiter for deciding what's good and what's bad. From my personal experience, and from historically speaking, we really think we're hot shit, and we are really not. We are not very bright when it comes to understanding these things. We're critical and judgmental in all the wrong ways. 
Critical thinking and being critical are two different things. So, I don't know. It just seemed like we should talk about it a little bit since it came up on the last show and uh, just try and define it somewhat or talk about the issue, as it were. So, I guess that's about it. I don't want to go on and on and on about it. You guys, I'm sure, have got your own stories about this, and certainly I'm quite willing to talk to you about anything. So, I guess that's probably about all for now. And uh, this is Schieffer's Magic Alcove, and I'm Schieffer Bradigan. Blessed be.